The situation in the Middle East is turbulent, complicated, and can be very confusing. Nowhere is this truer than in Israel and the Palestinian territories. As well as complexity and confusion, there is also a great deal of disinformation emanating either from the ill-informed, the misinformed, or from those who want to mislead. I served in the British Army for 30 years, often working in the type of security situation that we are talking about here. I've spent many years studying Middle East politics and security and have been given unprecedented access to some of the most important decision makers in the region. There are two fundamental truths which will help you understand and make sense of what is really going on. The first fundamental truth is this. The leadership of the Palestinian people do not want their own state in Judea and Samaria, the West Bank and Gaza. When you consider the vast efforts that have gone in over many years to try and find a way for the Palestinians to have their own state, efforts by the US, the UK, Israel, European countries, the EU and the UN, and many other nations and international organisations. None of these efforts have ever led to a Palestinian state and show no signs of doing so. The Palestinians want one thing only, the destruction of the Jewish state. That is also the goal of so many of their allies in the region. They don't want to see two peoples living side by side in peace together. Why do the Palestinians continuously refuse to make any concessions whatsoever for peace in the interests of their people? Why have they consistently rejected offers of a two-state solution going all the way back to 1948? Why do the Palestinian leadership indoctrinate their people and educate their children to hate Jews and reject the Jewish state? TV shows, school textbooks, films, newspapers, magazines, websites, all official Palestinian materials and publications deny the Jewish state any right to exist and incite hatred. The indoctrination is so profound and so malignant that young boys and old women can just pick up a knife and go out and stab and slash a pregnant Jewish woman. The strength of their hatred is underlined by their knowledge that they themselves may well die in their violent acts. Why do the Palestinians attack Israel from Gaza with rockets and terror tunnels, inciting military exchanges that they know they cannot possibly win, that they know will result in dead Israelis but death and misery for many more of their own people. I repeat, the Palestinians only want the destruction of the Jewish state. Of course, the Arabs now know that they can't destroy the Jewish state by military force. They have been trying to drive Jews out from the Holy Land for a hundred years, since the 1920s. And during the Second World War, the Mufti of Jerusalem even persuaded Hitler to bring the Holocaust to the Middle East to murder the Jews there as well as in Europe. And when the UN resolved that the State of Israel should be born in 1948, five Arab armies descended on the fledgling nation. Ever since then, they've been trying to destroy the Jewish state using conventional armies and every form of terrorism. Each time they failed and were themselves defeated. Their failure led to a completely different strategy. Demonizing, slandering and distorting the truth about Israel in order to bring about her isolation and destroy her. This is a second fundamental truth. We are witnessing the greatest smear campaign in the history of the world. We see evidence of this every single day in the newspapers, on the radio, on the TV, all over the internet, at the UN, at the EU and other international bodies by many governments around the world, 
in our schools and universities and by human rights groups. In 2015 alone, the UN General Assembly adopted 20 resolutions against Israel and just three for the rest of the world combined. Not a single resolution was adopted on gross and systematic abuses committed by China, Cuba, Egypt, Pakistan, Russia, Saudi Arabia, Sri Lanka, Sudan, Yemen, Zimbabwe, or on dozens of other gross and systematic human rights violations. Just one resolution was adopted on Syria, a regime that has murdered more than 200,000 of its own people. 20 resolutions for Israel, one for Syria. The UN Human Rights Council consistently singles out Israel for false accusations of wanton brutality and war crimes. Allegations that have been dismissed by America's most senior military commander and by generals from around the world who have said that Israel goes to unprecedented lengths to avoid death or injury to civilians on the battlefield. In 2016, the UN Commission on the Status of Women concluded its annual meeting by condemning only one member for violating women's rights, Israel. There were no condemnations of any of the other 191 countries, in some of which women's rights are really violated systematically and daily. The anti-Israel falsehoods and abuse delivered from the UN resonate around the world and are then echoed and repeated in schools, universities, human rights groups and the media. Many countries, human rights groups and the global media unequivocally accuse Israel of illegal occupation and illegal settlement in the West Bank. Accusations that are not supported by international law and are rejected by some of the world's most distinguished legal authorities. These two fundamental truths represent the reality of the conflict between Israel and the Palestinians. Look at every event, consider every argument through the prism of these two truths. This is Richard Kemp in London for Gatestone Institute. Thank <laughs> you.